Hello, human peoples. You're listening to the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. Support us and gain access to great exclusive podcasts like Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and our latest show, Spiel Boys. Head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We do game streaming, movie nights with our patrons every Friday night, and you can even commission your own podcast about anything you want. Literally anything, within reason, and we have to do it. You are quite frankly out of excuses not to go visit patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Halbkasten mit Tom Reimann an David Bell. Hello, everyone. Hey. For another episode hey of Strike Cast. Hey, now. The show Strike Cast. We have always done where we get hyped about stuff and things and striked about stuff and things. I'm your co host, Tom Ryman. I'm your other co host, David Bell. Do I go? It, I, yeah. it, it's like I've never been here before. I'm Bridget Greenberg. Hi, Bridget. Hey. hey. How hey. are you? I'm doing great. I'm excited to How? talk about some indie movies. Um, How's the strike going for you? Uh, you know, I work on small enough things in commercials that uh, it's like ripple effects for me. Uh, yeah. As a producer. It's not like quite the strike, but it is uh, the fallout of the strike across the industry. But, you know, I've been chatting are... with... Oh, yeah. sorry. No, no but, you... you know, I'm glad uh, it looks like they, they got what they wanted. We're talking about it a little later in the show, but... Yeah. I'm excited will to be. see how we... this changes. Yeah. Yeah, we're half we're half done with the strike until the visual effects artists strike, which they should. But like of the two big strikes in Hollywood, at least one appears to be ending. And yeah, we'll talk about that. I didn't even realize because I talked to some another director does commercials. I, I it didn't occur to me like yeah, that it doesn't. You can still do commercials and shit. Um, yeah, which yeah, why wouldn't you? Um, are, is everybody bummed that Michael Gambon died? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, man. So yeah. I was uh, very. He's Gosford Park. He is he's a, Gosford he's Park. He's a lot, man. He's, he's a lot. detective. He's the second Dumbledore. Yeah, the he's se- Dumbledore the second, too. Dumbledore the second. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, life Aquatic. All our Dumbledores are gone. Yeah, Life Aquatic. Uh, man, all just of bringing our, us way all down. Of our Dumbledores. Bridget, of our um, dum- there are no more Dumbledores. <laughs> yeah. Now that we've made everybody sad, do you have anything to plug at the top of this, uh, the very beginning? Oh, plugs up top. Whoa. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, if you're listening to this, uh, I'm sure you know, but uh, over at Small Beans, Abe, uh, uh, Swaim, and I, we're, we're trying to make a movie, and we're in the middle of that. And uh, if you follow the Small Beans Patreon, you can uh, you can hear updates about how that's going. Uh, we're hoping it will it will heat up soon, and there will be a lot more exciting stuff to update you all about in the near future. Yeah. Sweet. Well, now that the writer's strike's over, you can keep writing the movie that's that already been was written. what was ho- yeah, that was what yep, was holding yep. us up. They're yeah. still writing it. <laughs> um no, I yeah, again, we'll talk about it later. But yeah, everybody check yeah. that out. Check out uh the movie that will happen and I you guys aren't looking for funding, but I bet you could still give them money. People could Look, still I bet if they'd be like willing to accept it, yeah. Look, yeah. we we can figure it out. If uh, <laughs> if you yeah. ran into some money that you're you want to donate to your favorite filmmakers, yes, your favorite. Right. You just um, you just found a stumbled upon a chest of doubloons on the beach. If I was a you billionaire, know, there, yeah, I I would give you guys a hundred million dollars and say you have to use it only on this script. Really a real Bruce Dersmillion situation and, yeah. where you have to spend all of it on this movie. You're like, I guess. I, I, well, I guess we'll figure it out. I Yeah. I Look, I, I I could do something with that. Yeah. I would also insist none of it on marketing. Just uh, It has to all be just, on the screen. Just the movie. It's got to be all on the screen. Oh, man. <laughs> it's all going to be 
we're gonna CGI every fur suit in yeah. that movie. <laughs> the best CGI fur suits you ever see. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, thank you for being on. I'm excited. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. hyped. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Let's we get got, hyped. Yeah, we got some indie trailers this time. Indian foreign trailers. Uh, that's the theme of this Kinda week. Like a we whole, also have a whole episode of movies that deserve more hype, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is, I believe, look, doing a quick scan. These are all movies that I looked at for deserve more hype. Where I was like, these all oh, kind cool. of seem like movies that deserve more hype. Sweet. Um, I've done... Like, for, like I've I've done like shittier movies sometimes when we do indie movies. <laughs> I I briefly considered an uh, EOA Bull has a new movie coming out. Oh and I was boy! Like, yeah, and I was like, why, why? You know, like yeah. no no needs it to share there, that. There with are the good world. ones being made. Yeah, there, yeah, there, there, are, there are good there ones are being made. We could waste our precious breath on. Yeah, in my opinion, everything we look at has the potential to be very good. But we'll talk about that. But first, we have producers to thank, including. But not limited to, at Nerd Numbers. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you to uh, Zero Charisma. Thank you. Thank you to Aaron Burser. Thank you so much. Thank you to AJ. Thank you. Thank you to Andrew Howe. Deck the halls with blood. Thank you. Thank you to Asking Seven. Thank you so much. Thank you to Bob Grenville. Thank you. Thank you to Bootler Bootleson. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, let me swoop in here. Thank you to Brian or Tom Nose. Thank, thank you. Thank you to Brockway Loves the Meat Millie. Thank, thank you. Thank you to Brito wants you to hit. I'm sorry, Brita wants you to drink water, hit the gym, and do the ska because they loves y'all. Pick it up. They get a Chester's Prophet. Thank they you. They get a Christopher Robert Sparts Esquire. Thank they you. They get Dan Hackroyd. Thanks. They get a Davy, the ghost of East Las Vegas, Francis. Thank you. And they get a David Knife Boot Henson. Knife Boot. All right. We're going. We're in it. And Into we're starting the with the films which oh, deserve yeah. more of the hype. This first one is called Creepy Crawly. Um, this is, you said it's Thailand. This is out of the, uh, everything um, I said was describing it as Thai. So yeah, this, um, yeah. this is the thing, but bugs, right? Yeah. It's bug a thing. bug. Yeah. There it the seems to be an apartment building that is on lockdown. Um, that's what my assumption. And one of these things is not like the other. Someone explodes into bugs at any moment is what it I seems d- like. I do not like these bugs. Yeah, I do not like these bugs. You're not a bug <laughs> these fans? bugs. I did. I'm not a bug fan, and these are. Uh, I don't like these bugs, especially. I don't like the multiple legs. I don't like that they appear slimy. They got a lot of legs. Uh, they really don't don't like the bugs. Um, it looks creepy. It is creepy. It is crawly. It is. Uh, it's, I'm not it good delivers. With, I'm not good with bugs. It delivers on those two words. Yeah, it's. This is a. I was definitely like shaking off <laughs> bugs the whole time <laughs> i was washing it oh boy i'm so excited this has introduced a whole new irrational fear for everyone that you know you may just be in a room somewhere in the conversation <laughs> the person may just explode into bugs right which i believe i, I don't yeah our jason pargin i think had that in one of his books uh yes um, <laughs> that, that yeah. definitely happens <laughs> yeah and it, it uh yeah it looks like yeah mostly centipedes um it looks I, I, I said in the our notes the pandemic stuff is a little eye rolly and like I, I I don't think it's it's not overly used here, you know. Um No, it's a good it's and a it's, cool way to, to sort of yeah because it, you know, it's clearly borrowing or taking some some homage to the thing. So it's it's a cool way to sort of get that same idea of being totally isolated in this one location in a in a way that makes sense for like a modern city setting. Yeah, I assume it's not COVID because if you were in an apartment building yeah. and you were stuck with bug people, right, that's the thing. Like, but I, the lockdown, I'd be like, eh, yeah, we're good. I'll get COVID. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I, I forgive the co- like the uh, homage to COVID if that's what yeah. it can be called. Um, if the disease, if the reason for lockdown is this uh, bursting into bugs disease and not COVID. Right, we would. As long as you take it somewhere else, I get a little less, I give a little more leeway to uh, yes. cribbing from COVID. I'll tell you what, if COVID made you burst into bugs, a lot more masking. A lot more masking. A lot more masking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you get those things stitched to our faces. Masking. The people without masks, that would be, <laughs> I would be like, holy shit, man. And they're like, yeah, I don't care. I would. Yeah, the mess. I'd be running I can't so breathe far in the away mess. from them. Yeah, we'd be a bug. Um, <laughs> yeah, be a bug. And it, it, it just like it's more that we were going to see so many allegories for COVID and and or metaphors yeah. rather. And it's like 
if it's good, it's good. That's fine. You know, and this does look. Yeah. Uh, if you can stand the bugs, it looks like a lot of fun, even though it's just like, you know, it's yeah. the thing, but bugs. Just bugs. It looks Big, gross, good. weird bugs. And the thing is good. Yeah. yeah I mean, for, for your, like the, the horror movies have uh, like lived and died on how they get everybody stuck in one place. Yes. So there was just this big cultural phenomenon where we are all stuck in one place. So we're going to see it for, for They're gonna a while. They're going to keep but, uh, doing it, yeah. You know what? This is, But I like, uh, it's a good idea. Yeah. Slightly unrelated. I watched the remake of The Thing recently. Okay. Um, that, was a, um, that was a decision that you made. Well, we were just talking about The Thing. I, I, yeah, so sure. I've been, as I, whenever I'm on my exercise bike, I'll just put on a movie that I don't care about. And, that, and I'll sure. watch it for 45 minute increments over a few days. <laughs> um, and this is the current winner of that. That movie, really, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's just like it's not just the CGI. There's also like a profound lent- lack of tension, and like there's little things where like when they're outside in the yeah. Arctic, they're still like wearing makeup, and it's like they're not like you know like in the thing there was that feeling of like yeah. they're frozen out there. You know, it's right. There, there was a grittiness yeah. to the thing. Yeah, that we did not need remade. Yeah, we, it was that yeah, 2011 it was, sheen. Why remake that movie? Yeah, it's a that movie is a real shame. Um, that's all to say, this feels like a better version of like this is also kind of CGI. Yeah, it's also kind of the thing, and it's like, yeah, do this instead. Don't remake or prequel the thing. Make just a different thing inspired by it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the thing premise is so you can change it a million ways and it has been done yeah. a million ways, but it's always fun yeah. to play with. There's something in the building. You got to figure out yeah. what, what it is. What if they're bugs? Well, have, yeah. You know? I'm, I'm waiting for, and what if they're bugs? <laughs> I'm waiting for COVID shark. Personally. Yeah. yeah. COVID We're shark. Locked in place with a shark. <laughs> oh, Sharknado. The Sharknado is <laughs> heading right for your building yeah. on lockdown. COVID shark. It's just a sneezy shark that has like fatigue. No. I want long COVID Sleepy shark. shark. <laughs> it's just a, a shark that's just you know, just feeling a, like like a fuzzy headedness. Yeah, and just yeah, a little down. Just like man, I shouldn't have gotten COVID. Cognitively, not I all. Should have worn a giant shark mask. No, terrible um, breathing problems. Yeah, let's talk about the delinquents. This is um Spanish. I should really l- figure that out before I say things. Um. This is from a country. <laughs> this is from a country. I a Spanish speaking. Yeah, country. this is all to say. I really think this is going to get an American remake because I think this premise is really solid. Because oh, yeah. it's about a heist, and it's the perfect crime where the guy steals money from work and just decides, "I'm going to go to jail, and I'm going to give you the money while I'm in jail. I'm never going to tell them where the money is, and then when I'm out of jail." I will have the money and we'll split it. And to me, that's worth being in jail for a few years. And that is a really good idea doing the math of like, well, I could work for three years or I could w- go to jail and make more money. Like that's what basically is the calculation, right? Yeah. But, it, but there's a, his sort of unwitting accomplice there. There, I like that the trailer is yeah. also revealing that there's another part of this movie. That's the real capitalism commentary where it's like he's like hiding out in the country and uh it's like like learning i mean just getting to live a life where he doesn't have to do like his nine to five like he says at one point like we live to work right. yeah he said yeah. yeah the setup of the movie is he he like doesn't want to yeah. do anything uh that he doesn't want to work he doesn't want to like have a lot of money he just doesn't want to do any have enough money to not do yeah anything i think about that all the time uh, like a yeah. million dollars it's like well i could pay rent for the rest of my life probably if i d- did the right calculations <laughs> like maybe i yeah i yeah i watched uh the craft last nice. night with some friends and uh in that movie yeah in that movie they freak out over uh like one <laughs> she kills her stepfather and the big win for them is they get a hundred and seventy five thousand dollars in los I angeles forgot about that. yeah I, in my mind it's like millions it's a hundred and seventy five and yeah no it's a hundred and seventy five and their life dollars. changes and then they show yeah. her new op- yeah and well they show like the new apartment she bought and i was like and that's it you cannot right. shit anymore <laughs> that is your hundred and seventy five thousand oh dollars you did it <laughs> uh, oh that's a bummer but 
but the delinquents looks great. I, it, an American remake would be interesting of this because maybe in whatever country they're in, jail might feel worse it for three years. I don't know if that works. Yeah, I was as gonna well say in the American penal I bet system. They also, there has to be. They they must like make sentences longer, right? For this reason, <laughs> I want to say. Yeah, and they'd also just. They, right. The FBI would watch him like a hawk for the rest of his life when he got out of right. jail. Oh, yeah. Looking for that money. Yeah. So, yeah. So there is a different element to an American remake, but this one feels very like Coen Brothers E and yeah. like a lot of fun. And also very pretty. Yeah, it looks well made. It's, it, feel, it, it doesn't feel nihilistic like Coen Brothers, though. Yeah. It feels the opposite. No. Yeah, yeah, a hopeful Coen Brothers <laughs> yeah. movie the, about like, heists. I and think capitalism. the conflict is the other guy just has this thrust on him, and and so it's like, here, take the money, and he's like, what? Like, like there's that element. So it's like he yeah. has to uh, uh, abet this guy, like against his will, essentially. Um, so I bet it, I could, it, right. it might get dark, but the trailer doesn't make it seem that way. No, but. It's got to go somewhere, right? Something's going to happen. Well, yeah. 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 I mean, there's a lot of, yeah, the premise leaves a lot of like balls in the air in different ways it could go. It looks like yeah. a really fun movie. I agree. I was really into um, this one, actually. Yeah, me too. This one is low key. Yeah. This is one yeah. that's like, I I would have put it on more hype, but it's also like kind of like there's not like a, you know, like a, a big like a, a dick shaped clown in it or something to grab you where it's like, it's just kind of an adult right. movie about, um, uh, yeah. about like a, it's like, it's a crime movie. It's the least exciting yeah. version of a crime movie, um, <laughs> but it looks great. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a very realistic crime movie, which is not the yeah. most fun, but the premise yeah, they, they seem to do a good job. With um, it's a lot of realistic crime movie, so it's a lot of a guy with a mustache carrying a bag around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, twirling. Yes. Uh, let's talk about obituary. This is. Um, I'm glad we landed on the same thing, Tom. This really felt like a '90s dark comedy. It, it feels almost twee in that way to me. Yeah, yeah. or like like um, Last Supper, if you remember that um, one, or you reference Gross Point Break. It's about a woman who writes obituaries in a small town who decides to kill people to keep her job, essentially to keep the obituaries going, and then yeah. of course I assume gets addicted to it in some way. Um, yeah. You guys said '90s movie. I just all I could think was like, "This is the most." It's Irish pretty Irish. Oh yeah, yeah. They could put out of yeah, it, the yeah the darkness, but like yeah, it's a uh, it's about obituaries. It is. It is. It is. It is extremely Irish. Yeah, we we can't not mention that. Yeah. No I'd, Colm Meany though. No Colm. Maybe. So it's not. He's on the trail. No, it's not the, the trail, most. But he might Irish. pop up. What if? What. It's what not, if she yeah. meets death it itself and it's played by Cole Meany? Then it would be the most. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, then film this of looks, the year. Um, good. It yeah. looks like it, it. Like you said, almost tweet where it's like this could be. Um, this could go the wrong way, yeah. I guess. Well, but ultimately, what, I, I think it looks good. Here's what I. Here's what sort of sold me was that my initial react, like the premise itself can go, like you said, a lot of ways it could go very bad. Um, yeah. We're with something like, um, I don't know, just like it's it was somebody trying to do like a black comic tone and not doing it right. Can be really, I'm, I'm trying to think of a great example. I guess the one that's coming to mind is very bad things, even though I know there's like yeah. some people that that movie does have its fans. Uh, but like, it, it, just to say that the tone's difficult to pull off, so I was worried that it was going to be like a little too uh, twee or like trying to be like like wry or ironic. So what what sort of sold me on the movie is that as the trailer progresses, uh, it's pretty violent. Yeah, like they 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 commit to it. Yeah, they commit to it. Yeah. The premise. Yeah, they do it. It kind of remind me of uh, uh, I love Man that movie. Down, that movie is great. Irish movie. Yeah, yeah. I felt like at you know this movie could be kind of if innovative of that off. if they lean into the, the like yeah if they pull it off if they lean yeah into the problem the, the problem they could run into it, and this is premise. personally I have this with Sweeney Todd which is that you watch and you're like well I don't like anybody 
in this. They're all miserable and they're assholes yeah. and they're murdering people. So it's like you have to balance that where it's like, yeah, if your main character is killing people, obviously you don't want them to be the hero. But then, like, why are you watching it? Yeah. Why uh, are we watching? Yeah. Yeah, and they yeah. seem so droll and Irish that I'm not sure if there's going to be a connection point, but hopefully there is. It, it didn't They're rule so that Irish. out, this trailer. They can't, they can't mm. help it. Look at They're them. They're so Irish. Uh, all right, let's talk about uh, Bridget. <laughs> Wait, I was going to ask you about this, actually. You're comfortable talking about this next one. <laughs> all right. This is yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. story of Bridget, a documentary. No. <laughs> this is yeah my I yeah. Uh, I was no this is story Ave. Boy in Brooklyn um story Avenue this is uh what Avenue right? story Avenue or is it or is it they story call Ave. Ave? Okay. Story Ave. yeah story I Ave. didn't shorten it I didn't shorten it when I wrote it down um it, it's about a graffiti artist who's like very good and is is seems to be I mean Bridget I I feel like you could spoil it so don't um. But uh, it, it seems to be like yeah. he's torn between um, it's finding Forrester, right? It's that idea of like, you can do great things, but you're also kind of, um, you have all these friends and stuff in, in yeah. Right. You can easily get swept up. These movies are the like catnip for things. me um, in that. Oh. Like, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to yeah. see this coming of age story. So fucking bad. Um, and Luis Guzman yeah. playing the mentor yeah. role. Yeah. Better, better than Sean Guzman. Connery. Um, uh, yeah, I have a friend. Yeah, but yeah, we were we were saying all that just because I yeah. have a friend who is an associate producer on this movie, and uh, if you go to the Instagram, you can see it's playing. Uh, it's got a short theater. Release, yeah, we did so not plan that. A couple people. I love it. You were just like, oh, is it a problem that I know yeah. the people producing us? And it's like, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, because I, I was, yeah. I didn't know this was a friend of mine producing, and then I, I saw this, and I saw like this friend of mine was posting, and I was like, you produce <laughs> this, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like I, I was talking to him a little bit about it, uh, and it seems just like a like a really sweet, heartfelt movie, kind of, uh, yeah, like Dave said, this is catnip for a lot of people. These stories just work so well and are so affecting, and there seems to be like a cool magical realism element to it and uh louis guzman yeah, doing, doing it would so funny if you're like, yeah acting. not for me don't care for this yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> no it uh <laughs> not for me yeah <laughs> yeah i'm a little maybe biased because yeah. i want my friend well, to, is, is, to do well but uh I, yeah it, I it looks film, like a cool movie to work on that, just because this looks like a good movie um because i yeah, yeah, yeah and, it's, and, it's a good movie. yeah and the other fun thing about uh this yeah these sort of this like kind of genre of movie because it's an established genre like we were all saying uh, is he's getting to see who's 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 getting to play yeah, the, yeah. the capital A acting mentor role, and yeah, it's Luis Guzman. That's fun. I'm excited to yeah, excited to see him in a role that's like that. That's fun. That's new. We haven't in a super serious role. Yeah, also like traffic, but even then, he's no, kind of he's comic done like traffic. little. Yeah, even when he's being a right, more serious kind of character, funny, yeah. there's always a little. Comedy, I think um, it seems like uh, yeah, like his yeah. Community oh, yeah. just made him funny. His presence funny, but uh, yeah, yeah. I think he's, he's gonna a, flex. He's gonna be real flex. good. These movie, it's that thing where like every movie kind of has this. It's like you watch a romantic comedy. You know they're probably to together at the end. You like that journey, and it's like this is like there's a certain feel good element of movies like this, and it's like I personally fucking love that journey. Maybe yeah. it is darker than I think it is. Either way, I want to watch it based on this. Um, so story av, everybody check it out. The young yeah. kid in it also looks like like some of the reviews were yeah. sort of saying like oh yeah this kid's great oh yeah the, looks the great. his performance looks really good from what we see in the trailer yeah for sure absolutely um yeah this feels like uh and and knowing a little bit about how it's made it's yeah it's just a like a very artful indie coming yep. of age story that we've seen but I, I those yep. written by AI movies surprisingly that all, a, all chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All chappy by soulless ro mechanical stories. overlords. <laughs> yeah, it look, yeah. We had to yep. feed them yeah. gerbils. Yep. They're doing yeah, good. They, they pumped it in. They they're getting. They read the story. They're, and they're like, damn it. They're getting it's smart. Good. It's a good story. Fuck. Um. Yeah. It's good. I yeah. Even the AI uh, related. No, I'm they excited got, for this they one. When, it, one. when did you say it's coming out? It's select theaters right now. Yeah. 
select theaters. So I know if you go to their Instagram, they'll post about there's like some there's some screenings in L.A. Nice. And, and in small indie theaters all over. So uh, you can see it in theaters. And I'm sure by the time it's out, it seems like the kind oh, of movie yeah. that's going to hit Prime or Hulu or yeah. hopefully I'm hoping if they if <laughs> unless that was news, my friend couldn't tell me. But uh, nice. Um, you can see all right, this theater. next film is called Last Shadow at First Light. Um, this is from a country. Um, <laughs> Japan. Yeah, this is Japanese. A right? country. Um, I I didn't look up who made this, and I'm curious. Um, what do you guys think of this? It's it's, it's a, a film? it's a first film. It's oh, in, in her ooh, future, yeah, yeah first it's film, this lady. Debut. Um, it um. It, yeah. It's got yeah, it's got a little bit of personal shopper vibes to me. Only in that it appears to be a supernatural story, but it's not sure. horror. It's more about um, right like death. The, yeah, like it seems like this one's yeah, like her her yeah, mother connecting. seems to be dead, and she's going to uh, taking a sort of pilgrimage to this place that her mother used to go to with her uncle, and like it feels like supernatural and really moody and kind of. Uh, not really gothic, but like, like the modern version of that. You know what I mean? You know what I'm yeah. To Sometimes yeah, these I'm can gonna, be um, scary. That's what I like about yeah, it. Yeah, like personal yeah. shopper. <laughs> yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There. There's like a. There's like a haunting quality. It's a very short. It's more of a teaser than a trailer, but it. It very much like a. A tonal. Uh, trailer where you get the vibe. Very personal shopper. Uh. I also get like with the with that also tonal or uh, yeah. thematically kind of like after you oh, yeah, yeah. movie that came out last year with Colin uh Farrell. Uh yeah, like a meditation right. on the Yeah, afterlife. she's seeing like these weird kind of lights, these apparitions, uh, these kinda like, do? Yeah. streams of light. Um and that's a cool it's a cool idea. Yeah. Um it's a it's an abstract, right? It's not like yeah. literal ghosts. Right. Um yeah, it, I hope it, it keeps it, it yeah. like that. Yeah, the, me too. Movie. I mean, or if it doesn't, I, I it seems like it's going to hit yeah. this tone. Mm -hmm. So, like, ultimately, I hope it's able to say the thing it wants to say. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, because it, yeah, yeah, it it looks Without getting lost super in ghost. good based yeah. on this, and probably really fucking intense. It looks it looks beautiful, like the way it's shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah, it's a. I like the wisp. I hope, yeah, I hope the wisps of light don't turn into ghosts because uh, I think they like it's a beautiful trailer, and I think yeah, yeah the way it's shot adds like to learn the tone that, <laughs> that you see in the trailer that makes it's me ghost excited chis. for it. It's like, like a it's like this the ghost yeah. reveal. <laughs> just <laughs> shooting ropes everywhere. It's ghost yeah. chis. <laughs> just one ghost, one big ghost. <laughs> <Shoot>. <laughs> Yeah. What a beautiful movie ghost about chis. ghost chis. Yeah, it's a really it's a haunting movie about the ghost masturbator. He's just ghost right. chis. terrorizing the whole countryside. The movie ghost is yeah. <laughs> movie terrorizing ghost is this kind young of girl. Ghost yeah. chis. I mean not really, but feels like But like, there is a she scene. was good. She yeah. she fucked that ghost if she could. Yeah, there's movies. a scene where ghost chis is implied. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that <laughs> thematic Im implied ghost dramatic yeah. ghost chis. Ghost chis was the original name for the scream <laughs> villain, um, ghost chis, and Ghostbusters. Yeah, and it's been going around a lot. It hasn't yeah, been a home, and Ghostbusters. You know, that the world's we'll, not we'll ready for it. Yet. It's not ready for it yet. It's yeah, we'll blow people's minds too much. Yeah, we'll figure out a way to put. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll, yeah, we'll get figure there. out a we'll way to there. put Ghost Chis in a movie one of these days. Some brilliant uh, filmmaker. Maybe this is it. Yeah. Maybe this <laughs> is it. One day, perhaps yet on board. One can hope. We'll finally yeah. deliver uh, the promise of Ghost Chis <laughs> screen. <laughs> we'll figure it out. You want, you want to talk about Herd? Yeah. This is interesting. Um, this is a zombie movie, which is the biggest hit against it, <laughs> in the sense that we there's a million of these. Um, which isn't to say this looks bad. I put it on here because it looks compelling. There's a shot of the kid in the garage. It looks really compelling. Like it looks like it has some really tense, well thought out yeah. uh, zombie scenes that I've never seen before. That said, it 
Yeah, uh, and really also really the zombies up. are yeah. yucky. And it's about a, a woman and her partner, yeah. an, another lady who I think she, I don't think they're married. I don't know. They're a couple, and they it, they seem to find a militia, and she's keeping it on the DL that they are gay, right? Because they're like, yeah, I don't know about these people. Um, so it's that's another zombie movie thing, which is like, you know, finding solace yeah. in people that you're like, I don't know. These 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 are the people I have around me, I guess. Um, everybody seems yeah. really creepy and weird. Right, exactly. But then yeah. are the Pulling people that. the real monsters? <laughs> it's that's the, it's a it's a lot of that, uh, but it knows? looks like it's well who made knows? for what it is. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it looks like yeah they keep the tension high and compelling outside of you know. With the mix of zombie and threat from within, um, it kind of reminded me of a version of the yeah. hunt that is zombies and takes itself a little What's more you... seriously. Uh, right. What's I liked unique, the I hunt a lot. I think with this is I... the militia aspect because what I'm hearing, yeah, this, this what I'm team... reading is that it's about her yeah. warring militia groups, and I think I've never seen a zombie movie where they show like true like MAGA militia people, yeah. like Oath Keeper types. In a zombie apocalypse, because that would be, you'd realize, like, yeah, I got to be near the right. people with the guns, but also I don't really like the people with the guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they would do well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, if they can keep the level of tension they have in the trailer throughout the film, it, uh, I think it could avoid a lot of the, like, stereotype pitfalls yeah. i do have, have to, to like say like that thriller. the acting is pretty questionable in this trailer. yes i noticed that the line the line delivery is a little is like very <laughs> sure ending. sure yeah it's a little it's a little rough for sure i give uh you know trailers especially indie movie trailers i try to uh, yeah. give that a pass because those are those are a little tricky yeah. to cut sometimes <laughs> but uh yeah also yeah, Master no, that's Shake, definitely hard it? to not say. He for is. Sure. I didn't notice that until you pointed <laughs> it out. Sure, yeah. sure. He's the guy who's like complaining. He's not a. Yeah, he doesn't seem like a tough guy. Yeah. Everything we yeah. have already. Yeah. A rag to his neck. <laughs> yeah. Once he realized that, it's a lot funnier. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's almost problematic. Putting He's that, one of those yeah. people where it's like, "I'm sorry, man. That's uh, sort of your career." I'm immediately out of this. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm like, At best, you can be the alchemist and the venture, bro- venture brothers, right but now. it's uh, it's tough, man. It's tough. Yeah, <laughs> we all can hear you. Yeah, we all can, can hear, hear Master yeah. Shake. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> still, could be good. Yeah, yeah uh, questionable acting. This is probably the one of this list that I'm like the mm, least excited for, but I'd, you know. Um, this next one is low-key we'll maybe yeah. the thing I'm most excited for, but it really depends. It's called Last Straw. It is um, I, it's yeah. straw in the name. It's kind of straw dogsy, isn't it? It's a it's like home invasion style, but it's a diner waitress yeah. who's like working a shift and has to deal with a bunch of horse shit. And I assume the title right. means she's going to, uh, you know, fight back. Um it's implied at least. Yeah, I was this one I was really into this one and I'm it's pro- I'm probably a, a big fat yeah. mark for it because it is just so it's so brief. It's only about 30 seconds, but it's so 80s synth yeah uh thriller yeah. slasher uh uh vibes. Yeah. And man, I, I I am a sucker for that. So I was yeah. I was on board for this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah again, I mean we talked about it earlier, but like such a good compelling device for any horror movie is having someone stuck in one location. And, yeah. Uh, this diner seems like they a do. Really cool it's a real classic diner. It's one of the ones that's they have a like, great location. They just here. planted these uh, all over America. They're just one in a it's million, a, but they're right along highway stops. Yeah, you immediately like get a sense of yeah. place and know how spooky that place can be when probably empty. Probably a and that is probably yeah, it's around. Pr- probably nothing. a surprisingly pricey place uh, to film it's because a really good, yeah. unlike most businesses, it probably never closes. So they pr- actually would have to close it down to shoot there, no matter when they're shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Diners I guess are tricky. You would know diners about diners are always shooting tricky at diners. To shoot I think about it. Uh, yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, anytime I see a diner, I'm like, okay, all right, let's do it. That's why every right. diner scene you see takes place in one diner in LA. Uh, yeah, There's a very famous diner. I've said this before. I, I worked at a diner for diner. several years in Massachusetts, and it's the one that's in the uh, new season of it, Dexter. Um, and a few other things because it also it's one of these it doesn't quite look like this but it's one of these where the diner sign is like it's bigger like we it's like a huge neon diner if you've seen dexter you know what it looks like um and that one's like classic fucking diner and it was fun working there i worked the light night shift but that's another one they've shot it a few times because it's just like yeah when you think diner that's what yeah those places like like (laughs) This yeah. is it. Yeah. This is it. And uh, there's yeah, it's pure, it's pure and vibes. Yeah it's, yeah. it's a quick trailer. Um, it's maybe the shortest trailer you have on the list. Yeah. It's, yeah. But it looks spooky and cool. And yes. like it could be a really cool, just like tight. Um, this slasher this last one, horror. I'm oh, really excited for. I was confounded so by this trailer. But when you told me what it's about, <laughs> I'm fucking all in. It's such a good. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah. The trailer so this is was going to be the more hype well, movie this I hate to say this episode. <laughs> but like this like this was neck and neck with what will actually be the more hype movie. Uh this is called Crumb Catcher. Um it is <laughs> yeah. a home invasion movie where a guy holds a new he holds a newlywed couple captive in a lake house so he can pitch his invention to them, which is yeah, so good. It's so the fucking good. The best part is the I love this garbage. premise. It's love a, the premise. It's a device that will catch crumbs. It's like something that'd be in Seinfeld. It's a, it's like something Kramer would invent. It's a des, it's a device that'll catch crumbs while you're dining out, so the right. waiter doesn't do it and interrupt your conversation. That's it. The crumb catcher. And it's a and it's, it's a giant unwieldy dustbuster looking. It's the jump to yeah. conclusions, yeah. Matt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I, yeah, it's like, <laughs> exactly. Yes. That's it's, exactly what it yeah. is. Yeah. It's like a dust buster. On it's your really table, like funny because it seems like the conflict is table. simply it's that they, funny. if they invest in this uh, or like affirm his genius, they can go, but it's just so it's too mediocre. bad that you can't yeah, do it. That they yeah. can't do it because <laughs> they have in the trailer. It's like really weird and like, yeah, it's all, it's all disjointed. And then it ends with the woman just being like, I just, I don't know who would. Like yeah, need, who would want like, to sweep up their own crumbs? Up their own crumbs? <laughs> like, yeah, what? Crumbs yeah, are... <laughs> yeah. The ending is great. Yeah, the trailer's it's a little Gil chaotic, from the but Simpsons, once you look into the, the premise, you're like, this like is he is the fun. the guy seems like he's very Gil. Like he has this terrible haircut, yes. and he's just <laughs> weird and sweaty and desperate. Yeah, um, and yeah. just terrifying. <laughs> He's Gil by way of Matt Foley. Yeah. <laughs> Just an absolute um, maniac yeah. on Shark Tank. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's uh Yeah, it's there's a it reminded me of a South Park episode. Oh yeah. They, uh, go on vacation but are being stuck trying to uh people are trying to sell timeshares to them the whole time. Oh yeah. Uh, and they keep going into different rooms and it's different people selling timeshares and uh yeah, they made a movie this about looks, that. This looks and it's delightful. I love this, I I love this premise this. so much. <laughs> it's such a fun premise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's oh, very, man. very funny. Man, I can't wait for this. Um, yeah. Well, we have news stories, um, but first we have to thank some producers. So let's do that. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you to Be- Bo- that Deborah is awesome. Barbara is great, and cancer can go to hell. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to Dracula, the bus driving vampire, Thank as you. always. Thank you to Driftless yelled hype as he burst through a window. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to E.T., the extravagant terrestrial. Thank you. Thank you to Evil Ed 209. Thank you so much. Thank you to Exploding Rune. Thank you. Thank you to Funky J, mostly comes out at night, mostly. Thank you. Thank you to Heathcliff's helping handfuls. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you to ImpossibleWorlds.net. Issue three is out now. Gorge yourself on our fiction gorge. Thank you. Thank you to Jay the Crow Baron. Khan. All right, let me swoop in here. <clears throat> Thank you to Chris Shanovich. Thank you. Thank you to Look Mom on a podcast. Hey. Thank you to, 
They get a Mabel. Step on me. Step, Step on, me. on me. Thank, Thank you. you to Mackenzie Fuck Shuffling with Willem Dafoe's Confusingly Large Dick Chill. Thank you. Thank you to Mercurial Oz. Thank you. Thank you to Mike the Lurker. Thank you. Thank you to Mongolian Throat Skanking. Yeah, thank you. Mr. <laughs> thank you to Mr. Tell Your Wife how many Patreon subscriptions you have before you agree to buy a house. Thank you. Thank you to musical guest Rob Ritchie. Thank you. Thank you to No One Can Hear You Scream and Space McNulty. Thank you. It must sound like, Bridget, when, when you hear us do, does this just sound like you're dying? Like, what does this sound yeah. like to you when we're reading these names? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like, yeah, you both are having strokes. <laughs> I, like. I hope this is supposed to happen. I hope this, they, yep. you know, good for them. Let's, uh, <laughs> I hope they make it through. Yeah, you, you know, you never know if it, oh, like, cool. I, I kind of have a countdown to smart. check in on you guys if uh, <laughs> if it goes too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, ready. I'm ready to hop in if it becomes a major concern, but... Uh, <laughs> We love it. The uh, you know, so the WGA strike. They, uh, did it. they vote officially? Is it over officially? That's our main news. Yeah, I thought it was. I can't tell. Yeah, I think okay. it is. I yeah, think I knew it they ended had to vote, at, but it seems no. Like it's I think over. it ends I they had Thursday voted. I thought at twelve. The vote was unanimous to accept it. Did I read that wrong? Something like that. No, no, you might have read it right. I just I stopped paying attention. That's all. Like, that's why I'm asking. I think. Y- oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I know the vote went through. Okay. The vote went through. I don't know when that ends the strike officially. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely um, talk about that. And it's kind of strange because SAG is it's, still on strike. It's... So, uh, so, yeah. So it's, yeah, uh, it's a little like bit of a like, what do, we, what do we do? Because we've been this doing awesome. this because of the strike. What, and what just because the now? WGA is ending, which is great. I mean, people can start working on scripts to a point and then you need to solve um and so like for this show it's like i don't know Mm -hmm. we'll talk about it i was thinking maybe do like one regular hype cast and then go back to stripe cast but the point is the strike is not over no um and and even if it sag honestly even if sag gets something then they the visual effects artists and animators should do the same thing yeah um yes hell yeah yeah, we there are strikes that still need to happen. Yeah, and then uh, video game, yeah, like VO and yes, yeah. Sorry, Bridget. There are yeah, video game. I think yeah, no, I think in a just to add to that, like I think in a, when when it comes time, IATSE is probably yeah. gonna look back and their contracts and the DG as good, well. Good they for just them. renegotiated, but we're very, both very close to strikes and. Uh, Every, we'll probably strike now, and, strike. and, and uh, yeah, in my All opinion, said, absolutely should. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, I, no, I, I think there's nothing wrong with spreading Every, out. This but, is a good, but we're spreading this is a good it out, double, you know? uh, double, double feature here. WG and, and SAG, and I hope SAG gets everything they want. And then special effects artists and animators would also be a good one because that also puts a halt to a lot of movies. Yeah. Christopher Nolan will be the only one making movies. He'll be like, no CGI. Um, <laughs> uh, just uh, just looking at what they sure. got, and it does seem sure. good. Um, I would want to talk up to more writers, but there's obviously like it seems um, like they got minimum more increases. than even the initial ask was. Yeah, minimum Unless, ease, I could be um, increases it increased wrong, but... increased health and pension contribution. Um, yeah, it... artificial intelligence now. A uh, so officially AI can't write or rewrite literary material. Period. So that kind of puts an end to that. <laughs> and AI generated Woo! material will not be considered source material under this contract. Um, that said, a, and I, I actually don't think this is bad. A writer can choose to use AI when performing writing services. Yeah. Um, but they can't be required to. That's, and that's, oh, go that ahead. puts the power. Oh, it's, that puts the tools in the right yeah. hands, right? Right. Like, that's, I, I think of that like if you're a writer and you just you're using an AI thing as like a tool to like organize a draft or I sort of look at honestly or even think of an outline because yeah because, it's like being a graphic artist right it's right like, well and like half the tools you use in like well we need when we edit this podcast for instance in audacity half the tools we use are essentially AI like they're just little like yeah well we just hit a button and the program does this for us 
It's yeah, like it's it, a tool that you use to do the work that you're doing. It shouldn't and be. And Final the Draft work. has that sort of stuff already. Right. Yeah. It it's also yeah, no. yeah. It's also yeah, it's also not going away. Uh clearly. And so it would be it would be dumb for the industry right. to just uh say to bar the technology um, altogether. Uh that's not how technology works. Um, that especially one that uh has been adopted this yeah, year. The, so, yeah, what you said like, about Adobe the has artificial in the right intelligence hands, now. The power in the right and again, everything hands. is, uh, you know, absolutely uh, right. w- w- spell check is an artificial intelligence. You can think of it that way. Yeah. Um, where it's like the, the, the problem was cutting out the artist and the producers would just like go to it straight and make pieces yeah. of crap. Or they, this is also a thing is the company has to disclose to the writer if any materials given to them has been generated with AI. Um, and that's important, too. So basically well, and they're vi- avoiding and vice the versa, idea. too. Like it has to be agreed. Right. You can also you can, right. that's the other thing you predict you protect the companies too yeah because uh, yeah like a company knows like what they're getting um, yeah it wasn't some AI generated piece of shit yeah right well I do I don't think that this clause is going to stop I I still think it it gives right but then they give the it to a writer to come up with an idea based on an AI generated idea based on them plugging exactly. writer and mm-hmm. that can't be yeah, used to say, uh, Oh, they were a co-writer and give them less money or less credit because the AI that's, but yeah, we'll that's still a, see that's uh, okay AI when, like, movie. AI, so like, like they can, AI they can basically go to movies. write and go, Hey, we have this idea that AI invented. Here's the outline, write it. And then yeah. when they write it, they get sole credit and they have to be paid. Like it's not an adaptation. So it, it that like, AI can't ever be thought as in, yeah. in like that's yeah that's good until you know until we get yeah. like data from Star Trek then right. we have to think like can I then we should a, a let data create we should let data write books yeah oh yeah a hundred percent but right now yeah AI is not people right now and that's good oh yeah and then uh, um They'd be so... this one is a little weird the WGA reserves the right to assert that exploitation of writers materials <laughs> to train AI is prohibited by MBA or other law that's kind of vague which is like assert the right to say that it's like why can't it just be prohibited but I don't know that's weird yeah you're right well I guess because it would be impossible to prohibit like entirely I, yeah, fair. I don't think um, AI it is It does not bump me out because it's like, what if the AI, what if they train an AI to look internet. through the blacklist and steal my script or other people's scripts yep. and then write it for the studio? Mm-hmm. And it's like, instead of bringing... But it, the only reason that might not happen sure. is because um, new writers are cheap, right? So it's like, if they were like, we're going to write your script, you're going to do your script, Dave, here's $5. I'd be like, I'll take it, you know, because I'm desperate. Right. I think, I think under, yeah, (laughs) I think under these, the other clauses under this contract kind of protect that from making sense for a studio to do because either way, if they, right. If AI takes an idea from the blacklist, they still have to get another writer to write it. So what's more likely is they would accidentally, if you're going to pay someone, if you're going to pay someone anyway, you know what I mean? Like that's the uh, is a it takes a bunch of shit from there, um, and so like that's sure. the problem with AI, yes. right? Is that's already been, yeah. and this is a whole other conversation. But like AI and journalism, there's already been accidental plagiarisms because the AI plagiarized, and and then the yeah. company gets in trouble. Sure. Yeah, I. D- yeah, I don't think there's a world. I think uh, this is a really great. Right. Uh, the WGA negotiators did great figuring out what these new rules should be. Um, since it was so vague, I don't think anyone. I mean, I don't know. No one. I don't really know what they went into the strike thinking, but I can't imagine it was this. Uh, the AI of it all was this figured out, and I think they did a really good job protecting against yeah. the foreseeable future. There's some stuff that with AI that just can't be stopped at this point and can't really I agree. be protected against in a WGA contract, union contract. Uh, 
But uh, I think well, they do a really good job to. What I would say they protect. Yeah, the last thing I would ask for is like if they the invent an AI and they program see. it to pitch ideas. At this point, they should legally be required to only the only material they can give the AI is stuff they own or it has no or no one owns. The way like Photoshop apparently that's the thing they're claiming right is they're like the the pictures that right. we use is only art that is sure. public domain or that we own. And and if you're, you know, if you're Disney, that's a big amount of source material you get to tap from. And it's like, yeah, that's, right. that's fair, right? They own this stuff. They can tap from it. But the moment it starts, like, venturing out into the internet right. and finding other things, that's when it starts getting scary to me. Um, but, yeah. Right. It's, yeah, yeah, it's that's very. A, that's a hard but thing this to does stop. a very good indicator that like the SAG strike will also have a concession a like this, mm-hmm. where is, or where the studio will say, "Okay, no AI," like because it sounds like they're 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 saying that here. They're like, "Okay, we won't do it," and so it makes sense for them to not do it for SAG as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like in going into the residual, the residuals element of this yes. uh, of this contract, uh, I think WGA laid a lot of really good groundwork to hopefully have the SAG strike end a little earlier because there were definitely yep. a lot of things they were aligned on, and you know the Venn diagram between what they were striking against is very small. And I think yeah, the streaming also, which we didn't even go to, AI there's a lot of good stuff for, here about um, streaming residuals residual yeah. because that is very complex and complicated when yeah. it comes to like. They were calculating residuals based on their number of subscribers. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's stupid. Like, yeah, that's... that has nothing to do with how many people have watched the thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's the show. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, how they've decided to count that and the fact that we're going to get some transparency in streaming. That's data huge. Yeah, that's is, huge uh, that they got them to across release the even in the industry. some It'll of be that. Interesting to see where those numbers yeah. end up falling. I am. It's, oh, as, as, as little as legally yeah. that they I mean, have I'm to sure do. will be locked. Yeah. I don't know yeah. how much will be available <laughs> publicly. I'm interested to see. Oh, yep. man. As they also, little as possible, um, but I'm interested okay. to oh, no, see what kind of leaks out from cool here. Because uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it w- the the yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a solid. Yes. Fucking yeah, that contract. was a that was a big. And I, um, um, I had read. They did a really good job negotiating. This. Sag is is meeting on Monday. Nice. With them. Good. Yeah. Good start. Good start. Um, and I think, yeah. a, as everybody has sort of suspected, I think the companies were realizing, like, oh, no one likes us. We're not the heroes, are we? Other people have made this point, so I can't cl- take credit <laughs> for this. But, like, oh no, it's this what? sort of, like, VC, like, venture Jeff- capitalist, uh, dipshit, like, Wall Street CEO mentality that, that has just taken over every industry over the past, like, 20 years right like part of the reason it works is because it like it depends on the general public not being aware of what they're doing because what they're doing yeah. is indefensible yeah uh and so like they i think they made the mistake of doing that in an industry it's like the one industry that like yeah almost everyone in the world pays at least a little bit of attention yeah. to oh writers and actors they won't listen to them those charismatic actors and, well, and writers t- who, have, who have nothing but time and Twitter. And, it's yeah. all the stuff that everybody around the world looks at at least a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Just almost everyone. Yeah. yeah. It's re- it's hard not to be on the side then, of like, <laughs> yeah. then, like yeah. these fucking, yeah. Yeah, it's did impossible you see, I mean, not did to Did you see that interview almost. last week with um, the, I think it was the Ford CEO where the interviewer pointed out, so, well, you make a $30 million a year salary. It's like eight thousand percent more than like the factory floor worker. Yeah, I, I, I love that it's like the kind honest of out in the open right now, where people are like, "Hold on." Right, and their honest answer would be like, "Honestly, I thought no one would notice." That's ex- yeah. that, like that's it. Yeah. That is one hundred percent the reason. I thought no one would look at my salary, and now they are. Nobody's yeah, ever same with notice. airlines and everything. Yeah. yeah, where it's like once something starts sucking and you realize it, you're like, yeah. How much do these fucking people make, and, uh, uh, by the way? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
well, that's all the news because um, that's big enough news. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty huge. And so we can thank some more producers now. Um, big old thank you to Norm from Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you to Pete yeah. Forpagel. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you to Numino Ultra Microscopic Silico Volcano Coniosis Anti Disestablishmentarianism Jones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to pre order TikTok superstar Jason Parge's new book, Zoe is Too Drunk for This Dystopia. Pre orders are super important. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you to Rev MD. Thank you so much. Thank you to Ricky Cilantro. Thank you. Thank you to Rosemary's Baby from Eraser Head. Thank you. Thank you to Screaming Horse Pyramid. Thank you. Thank you to Sorry Cop, world's most laughable centrist. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to S- Steven. Thank you, Thank Stephen. you to the con- Stephen, the conveniently placed self-destruct button on the top of every baby's head. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the Midnight Patron. What patrons at midnight? Thank you. Thank you. So much. All right, let me swoop in here. Thank you to the Oatmeal Savage. Thank, thank you. Thank you to the producer formerly known as the Ghost of Dave Thomas. Thank you. Thank you to the To Be Terror Bunny. Says support workers. Egg David Zaslav. Yes. Thank you to these seven bees. Thank you. Thank you to Tiger George Pratt Thompson. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Thank you. Thank you to Tip Drizzle. Thank you. Thank you to Tux. Thank you. Thank you to Vincent. Thank you. Thank you to Why Did You Take a Flying Fuck at the Moon. Thank you. Thank you to Your Mom. Thank you. Thank you to Zzz because Pie Guy liked being last. Mm-hmm. Did, did I've read this? Uh, oh, we were. Yeah, we got real close there. Yeah, you're about to have to kick in your safety plan. <laughs> you guys were clocking in. My safe real word is there. the cowboy way. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. I was going to hit did, life alert. Did anybody see? multiple multiple <laughs> words, Tom? My, my safety phrase. Uh, did anybody read the little excerpt of like the oh. negotiations talking <laughs> about the roles like the different studio heads were playing? It was like. Well, Bob Iger and this other person had like, they all were displaying like their intimate knowledge of every aspect of the business. And this other person was really adept at handling some of the uh, more nuanced negotiations. And then Zazlab was in there providing moral support. It was like... That's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shut up. <laughs> <That's> like... <laughs> he was there too. He... Zazlab had orange slices. Oh man, that's wonderful! <laughs> and he, yeah, and Zaslav's mom brought Gatorade for the he whole team. He was there. <laughs> he was on, and Zaslav uh, was on snack duty. Zaz. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Zaz. I just, uh, I just love that. Even in what that, a goofy like, cast of characters, I really ass hope, kissing you know, little paragraph. Works out for they those still made Zaslav look like the fucking clown who doesn't know what he's yeah. doing, like nothing to contribute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Dave, yeah. Our cup runneth yeah. over with movies. What deserve Great. more hype? Yeah. Um, so dare I ask? Um, how could how could I have another? How right? could you have another? But <laughs> Could you look back into your into your wares? How and see do if perhaps you do there's it? There's one more movie that deserves more hype. There is Tom, and like that question, what is the hypest of movies that I'm gonna tell people about? Um, I got this uh, tip from this from uh, Tom Ryman, um, who is telling me about this movie uh, that it will be released October sixth in theaters. That's that's next fucking oh, month really? for Halloween. Wow. And it'll be on streaming October 20th. So if it's select theaters, I haven't seen that it was oh. select theaters, but um, it is it is coming in for Halloween. And it is Exciting. called When Evil Lurks. Now, go ahead and watch the trailer and you'll immediately like, you know, what's funny about this is I knew about this movie from you. Mm-hmm. When I watched the trailer, I didn't know it was that movie. Meaning that I watched the trailer and went, that looks really good. I'm going to put it for more hype and look into what it is. Then I looked into what it was and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, absolutely. It's from the director of Terrified, folks. Terrified. Um, Not Terrified. Um, Terrified. If you've seen Terrified, uh, Terrified, it is an extremely scary movie. Um, It's very good. Uh, it was recently ripped off by the movie Smile, if yep. that helps. <laughs> um, yeah, 
it, it uh very very good movie um uh, i'm sure people listening oh. are pumped if they know terrified now i know uh, what you're this is about. that director and it's called when evil lurks honestly that's all i have to t- say but what it's about and we this goes back to the covid thing it's about demonic possession but as a contagion and it's it apparently takes place in a world where people this happens people get demonically possessed as a contagion and they're used to it which is kind of interesting um and this small town basically these two brothers have to deal with a demonic infection spreading that starts at a nearby farmhouse um this movie from reviews is very cruel uh to quote slash film uh no adult child or dog is safe so heads up there sounds like the director of terrified yeah yeah oh yeah he kills children (laughs) no yeah yeah well do it yeah Yeah, i mean the the amazing thing for a goat to do amazing thing that goat walking up like flex from that goat uh, yeah so for people not right against the goat do it yeah that was a plus goat acting that, that was, you know, I've goat. truly never yeah, basically seen. Yeah, this farmer goes to a shoot goat, a goat, and a the dog, goat does goat the badass thing where it just puts its head uh, against the gun. It was pretty sick, <laughs> and it's yeah, it's clearly it was pretty sick in some way, and um, it looks really well shot. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm guessing it spreads yeah. by killing, yeah, which is why the goat does spooky. that, and why the uh, shot I, I think frames cool the man to have horns. To and then the, uh, the man in the trailer is immediately killed, and then I believe the woman who kills him kills herself. She does. Yeah, so I'm assuming it's yeah. spreading, like it's like bam, 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 through them. I'm guessing that's what's happening there, but I'm not certain. Oh, man. I, I yeah I love yeah. terrified so much um and this movie looks yeah. gnarly as shit yeah uh, it looks super spooky man, can't wait man yeah I'm so psyched I think one of the, it's I gonna think be one out of the, so fucking soon I know. I'm so psyched I think one of the brothers in the trailer yeah. is the young guy that we first sort of spent time with in terrified who's who's getting the shit haunted out of him in his apartment probably yeah this is one I don't think we'll cover it next month because we're pretty fucking packed yeah we are um but i'm gonna i can't wait to fucking watch this um yeah. and some of the other movies that compared to the one that stuck out for me is m night Shyamalan's the happening um in this review they say if you can believe it and i get i get why because yeah. i think they're killing themselves mm-hmm. and like hurting themselves i think it's probably that movie huh. but you know done you know better not done like well. not like the happening yeah done not like the happening mm. yeah <laughs> god damn yeah j- again terrified if you haven't seen terrified i want to rewatch that movie now not it yeah gnarly. it really um, is holy shit yeah and this looks like it's gonna be mean as hell and really fucking gnarly and man re- uh, real good yep yeah it's good it's it's really yeah. gonna oh sorry go ahead it was going to be fun October release. Again. Yeah, man, that was really one fun hard ass goat. Uh, like you know, in the witch. A... This is really going to yeah. put the really, no, really, really going to put the shock and shock over, guys. Uh, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. I love the fact that during the making of the witch, exactly. apparently that goat yeah. was a was difficult and would hurt people. Of course he would. And it's like, oh, it was Daniel Day Lewis in it. Yeah, it was like it's it's method just goat. yeah, <laughs> method goat. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, they're difficult. <laughs> yeah, they're real yeah. pricks. Goats are famously yeah. stubborn animals. They're like geese. They're the geese uh, of goats. Not, gr- not yeah. great to work with. Yeah. 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 I can't of imagine. Hooves. Yeah. The yeah. geese of hooves. Um, yeah. So uh, when evil lurks, the, 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 the only criticism is that name is very animals. generic. Um, I kept calling it in my head where evil lurks because that makes more sense. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, the goats of hooves. Yeah. Yeah, and if you think about it, yeah. Honestly, the the goats of hooves is think a about it, it. Geese are the ducks <laughs> of goats. Yeah, it's the true. geese of hooves. Are. Sorry, yeah. the geese of hooves think is a uh, yeah better name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. heard. I remember. I remember you used to say that all the time. All the time, unprompted. Uh, yeah, we yeah. had a lot of meetings about it. Actually, that, is, that I've often said that. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, That's wisdom you can yeah. use. I, it's just a... <laughs> It's just an important thing for people to remember. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I think that's it. I think we it, fulfilled all our, yeah, our obligations, guys. Sit on it, uh, we on did. I mean, that's a sound. Woo! We've I know. Got it. We're the kings. We're the, We're the yeah. best. We're the best. Wow. Whoa. Oh, yeah. man. I'm so glad you could be here. Thank you so much for being we on the show. It. I wear the king. Oh. We did it. Uh, I'm it so is. proud of all of us. Um, do you want to do a plug again right, right here at the end? Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always fun. <laughs> yeah, we're. I mean, we're here, so this I, I can do it again. Um, yeah, go over to Small Beans. Uh, check out the stuff we're doing there. Uh, we got more episodes of pod, the podcast I host with Sarah Griffith. Uh, Shooting 3 is coming out. And also more rough stuff coming Nothing. out. And we're making a movie over there. And there'll be a lot of updates on that soon uh because yep. nothing's gonna stop us nothing uh and you can follow me uh on that website twitter uh still i guess uh at bridget yeah. tweets uh, i'm on instagram this is at all great bridget news. underscore greenberg uh and and you know yeah. i interact there sometimes you can follow All right. me there. Sounds you good. Can do those things. We um but, we uh, have a Patreon. Patreon.com yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out, check slash out gamefully unemployed. G A M E F U L O Y unemployployed. If you go on there, we can watch we watch yeah. movies every Friday night with our patrons. That's fun. We did a bunch of X Files. Um I was thinking I really want to do Star Trek, the James Cromwell episodes, because James Cromwell plays like six different aliens throughout Star Trek. Ooh. Um but the point is, we mostly watch movies there. Um, and then we have exclusive podcasts for just $5 a month. Get access to Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Fox Muller's Maniac, Star Trek The Next Futurama, Spielboys. Uh, and we have a Discord community, a bunch of stuff. Check it out. You'll love it. Yeah, it's great. Please do. Um, we also have a store. Head over to GameForTheUnemployed.com. You can find a link to our Teespring store, where we have all kinds of cool original artwork and designs you can get on T-shirts, mugs, stickers, posters, all sorts of things. So slap your maximum Irish peepers Onto those. Yeah. Slap that ghost jizz on there. Yeah, ghost jizz. Yeah. And, and ducks are geese. Why do, why do you right. think they call them As dually always, ghosts? Are the geese ducks oh, or geese? Oh, because they're like ducks. Just, the thing I say. Because they're right. like ducks. Uh, okay. And Bye. Geese. Bye. Our music is produced by Chris Corlew. You can follow him on Twitter at at the Corlew, C-O-R-L-E-W, and find more music at shipwreckedsailor.bandcamp.com. Our channel artwork is produced by Michael Vincent Bramley. You can find more of his artwork at instagram.com slash mvbramleyart. Our episode artwork is produced by Justin Brown. You can follow him on Twitter at at Justin T. Brown, and find more of his artwork at artnessbyjustinbrown.com and justinbrown.info.